If you're looking for the best laptop for graphic design, then you have to make sure that you're choosing a laptop with the right performance for your needs. Now, before we get into the detailed specs of what makes up the best graphic design laptop, we need to see what's available on the market so that when we look at the specs, we understand what we're talking about and how it fits into your needs as a graphic designer. And yes, this is going to work for no matter what budget you're bringing to the table, but you have to understand what components make up the performance of the laptop that is best for your need. And one hint, it's not about one singular aspect of the computer. It's not just about the CPU or just about the RAM or just about the hard drive. It's how they all work together. So let's get right into the laptop lineup, starting from the budget category all the way up to the high-end, more premium price point laptops. And we're going to discuss why the laptops cost much more at the higher end price point versus the budget price point. What's the difference here in these laptops? And if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of each of the laptops, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, kicking things off at entry level for graphic design laptops, you can see a number of laptops that have eight gigs of RAM. You might say around $700, that seems a little high for entry level. However, I will say that if you get down to four gigs of RAM, you're really not going to have great performance. You see, RAM is really important to run multiple programs at one time. And it's important to run even a singular program at one time. Photoshop can take up to two to eight gigs of RAM, depending on the complexity of your project. And so if you turn on your laptop, you're already using one to two gigs of RAM. And then you open Photoshop, you're using anywhere from two to eight gigs of RAM. So as soon as you open the program, you could be maxing out your RAM and diminishing your performance, which would ultimately give you a bad experience and would not allow you to produce the work that you're needing to produce. So that is why I recommend people kicking things off at eight gigs of RAM and with a U-series processor. Now, each of these laptops come with a U-series processor with anywhere from four to eight cores or six to 12 cores. Now, as you add more cores and threads, you'll be able to run programs more smoothly and run multiple programs more smoothly. Now, also something you want to keep in mind at this entry level point is some of these laptops have a lower color gamut range. Now, the color gamut range is really important to making sure that the work that you're working on the colors are accurate according to when you maybe go to print or you go to post it online. Are they going to be accurate when somebody else pulls up your design work? If you don't have a color accurate screen, they may in fact not be. Now I lean into having a higher Adobe RGB, but sRGB is a great starting point and you're gonna see some of those higher level sRGBs in more of the entry level category. The high Adobe RGB is gonna come in more of the expensive, more premium laptops. Now, as we move into the more mid-range category, you can see that we're into 16 gigs of RAM, which is great in my opinion for a graphic designer working in multiple programs at the same time. So let's say you're somebody using the Affinity Suite and you're using Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and Affinity Illustrator. Or you're in the Adobe Suite using Adobe InDesign, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator. Running all those programs at the same time will be way more possible with 16 gigs of RAM and will be even more possible with 32 gigs of RAM. However, in this mid-range category, 16 is gonna be a great starting point for you, especially with the price point of some of these laptops. We're seeing them break the $1,000 price point, but not inch their way up too close to the $2,000 price point. Now, I like these laptops because we have great performance and higher core and thread CPUs. We have a nice amount of RAM at 16 gigs, and we have five 12 to one terabyte solid state drives, which gives us more storage for the work we're producing. And you're also gonna see these higher sRGBs coming through here in this category. We don't see any more of those low sRGB, so more color accurate screens are what we see on this list. Now we're up into the mid to higher end range laptop category. As we move up, we're gonna see laptops with higher build quality, more performance, and more color accuracy. So as you can see on this lineup, the laptops are increasing in price, but we're getting more performance alongside of more color gamut range and the build quality and on-the-go friendliness is increasing. So any of these laptops here, I definitely recommend for an on-the-go designer who wants good performance and great build quality. Up until this point, we've seen a number of of laptops that are fantastic for graphic design. So I kind of put a separation here between the laptops you've seen and the laptops you're going to see. The laptops you're going to see will have that increased color gamut range. So 100% Adobe RGBs, 100% DCI P3s for excellent color accuracy. You're also gonna to start to see laptops with more dedicated GPUs and they're gonna be slightly larger laptops. And so these are laptops that are gonna be great for video editing, After Effects, and gaming. So if you're a graphic designer who also dabbles in video editing and After Effects and motion design, things along those lines, the laptops that are moving up from here are gonna be great for those use cases. And then as I just mentioned, also somebody who does graphic design, but also likes to game. This laptop now has multiple use cases for you. So let's go ahead and check these out. We have a number of laptops here with dedicated GPUs, high eight and 16 core CPUs, and 16 gigs of RAM. 
and then also we're seeing the higher color gamut range. Now, as we go up into the MacBook Pros, these are really not necessary for graphic design. I would stick you with the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro M1, which we've seen previously on this lineup. These MacBook Pro 14s and 16s are extremely powerful and really not necessary for graphic design as a whole. They're really necessary for 3D modeling, for doing After Effects work, and doing video editing. I really don't think you need this much performance if you're only doing graphic design or illustration or digital art of some sorts. I think this is overkill and you can save some money by going with the Air or the MacBook Pro M1. But they're still great laptops. So, you know, if you want it, it's not going to it's not going to hurt. It'll just it's kind of overkill. And again, if you're curious about the exact live pricing of any of these laptops, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. And if you do use that link to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, as we move up into this category, we're again seeing more laptops with more capabilities for something like After Effects and or video editing and or gaming. And of course, the color gamut range continues to maintain a high level of accuracy. And so that's the benefit you're getting here. No more extra graphic design performance, just more of the other things that you might be doing. However, there's one caveat I want to point out on this lineup, and that's the Pro Art Studio Book 16. It comes with the dial. Now, this dial is something I've reviewed extensively on my channel. And if you're curious about more in-depth reviews of the dial, you can head on over to my channel and check it out. But this dial is actually killer for Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator work. It allows you to access quickly your tools right from the dial. So you can jump into menus, you can jump straight to tools without actually having to go to the menu or click the tool on the keyboard or, or move your mouse and go click it and find it. You can program this thing to have your most commonly used tools right at your fingertip. It is a game changer in my opinion, not a gimmick. So definitely consider this laptop if you want to increase your productivity and efficiency of workflow. Now the Dell XPS 15 and Dell XPS 13 is really a build quality masterpiece in my opinion for a Windows laptop. It has a carbon fiber soft touch key deck. It has aluminum top cover, bottom cover, and side panels. It just has a great feel. I've owned one for years in the past and I always loved using that laptop. It is really the Windows kind of premium laptop that a lot of people go for and enjoy. Now, another laptop on this lineup that really stands out as unique is the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo. Now, this laptop has two screens. So you can kind of set up all of your you know, functions and tools and brushes on the bottom screen and then have your main project working on the top screen. It really allows you to have on the go dual monitor productivity in one laptop. So it's a neat build. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, it's really important to understand what specs make up a great graphic design laptop. So go ahead and click or tap the screen here to join me in an explanation of the specs for the best graphic design laptop.